Good afternoon, Oakville. Uh, it's Kevin Fernandez here with Kaiser Mason Ball. I'm here with my colleague, Bota McNamara. Uh, he's the associate partner who leads our insolvency and restructuring practice here at the firm. And we thought we'd come on today and tell you a little about some of the fun we're seeing in our world. Um, it's a pleasure to join this live stream lunch uh, on behalf of Kaiser Mason Ball. Uh, we have offices in Mississauga and Burlington have been practicing for about 40 years. So uh, we know a bunch of you and look forward to meeting the rest. Boda, welcome. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon, everybody. So Boda, let's let's jump right into it. Insolvency, restructuring. Let's try to break that down a little bit. What are you seeing from your clients as they pivot post-pandemic? So what I'm noticing a lot in the space is courtesy of government assisting a lot with stimulus packages and the CRA really not pushing any executions at all. And banks being very reasonable when it comes to restructuring. A lot of people, businesses small and large have been able to move through the pandemic, um, muddle through, but generally survive um, and in some way, shape or form, I will be in a place that, you know, they can now exit the post pandemic in some form of that. Um, the real issue is going to be how they manage to do that. And a, a few, you find that a few persons out there have used things like, you know, payroll or HST to sort of keep money in the system. And these are concerning issues as they muddle through. And so as we get to the end of the pandemic, we really need to have a bit of a look at one's finances and see how they manage to survive and what needs to be done to tidy up and go forward in a healthy manner. I find for a lot of clients, they have challenges with respect to bankruptcy and insolvency restructuring can be scary topics. Maybe what we can do is we'll, we'll hit a couple of headings of who the different players are and how they work. So if you're a, a debtor, you owe money to someone, what are some mechanisms that are available for people to deal with their debts? Sure. The, I, I don't like the word uh, bankruptcy. I've always had to say this to clients and when I give any presentation. I like to use the word restructuring a lot more. It's a it really represents what the law is about. Uh, if you are a debtor and you find yourself owing money, you may not uh, be at the brink, but there are some financial worries that are, that are there. The law really provides you, be it your business or your individual self, uh, great tools to help you work through the debt problems. Uh, there are two principal acts that are utilized by practitioners. CCAA, which is for larger uh, debts um, over 5 million, and the BIA, um, and I'm using the short phrases for them, we can discuss later on, uh, with deal with individuals and smaller debts. Uh, the BIA means Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act, CCAA means the Company Creditors Arrangement Act. So the simple reality is these acts themselves, as, they, as they're utilized, really assist the debtor in putting together a proposal to their creditors, whereby they can compromise or reduce the debts that they're owing. It also assists when it comes to taxes that are due, and you can find that you can reduce your tax bill somewhat um, and allow for the smoother running of your company and the ability for you to repay your debts um, in a timely manner, in a structured manner. Uh, this really helps when debts are sort of out of control uh, because there's an automatic stay placed on anyone coming after the business or yourself. And in doing so, you're given breathing room to make plans, make proposals, and essentially put together a way to help yourself out of problems. Well, let's flip it on its head. Let's say you're a creditor, you're owed money. What are some solutions that might be available to you if you need to deal with that side of things? So uh, it's on the flip side, as, as, as such, as a creditor, when one finds themselves dealing with a debtor who is either frustrating the process, or not necessarily coming to work with you, you can engage the act 
uh, the acts and the laws in various ways. One of the normal ways for creditors to push using the law is to uh, commence a receivership, uh, which is a methodology whereby uh, the creditor can appoint a professional trustee to take assets that have been charged and take them away and market them and use the proceeds of sale to pay off the debt. Further to that, there's also the ability of creditors to get a trustee appointed uh, who will then step into the role of the debtor and again, collect assets in, sell them off and bring the debt down. So the act works both ways, but primarily I always want to mention to debtors that the act is a self-help. It allows you initially to fix the problem with your creditors, a failing which creditors now can move and seek remedy themselves. So if we were to say in a sentence or two, what's the difference between a receiver and a trustee again? Uh, simply put, uh, a receiver is really there for the creditor uh, to sit and collect assets in and pay off the creditor's debt. Trustees work for everybody involved. They'll work not only for secure creditors, but unsecured and have to make sure that they realize any assets to their maximum value for the debtor themselves in the long run. You had mentioned off the top that there may be some opportunities with the current financial climate and, and you know, the way people are restructuring their business and changing the way they do business. What kind of opportunities exist for people? So, as I mentioned earlier on, one of the benefits that we are finding now is that the, the government has really assisted with various stimulus packages, but also they've assisted with respect to uh, causing CRA not to push any enforcements. That coupled with the fact that a lot of financial institutions are also willing to work with creditors means that is, which means you're very much in a place right now where as we move towards the end of the pandemic and we come out the other end, you find that a lot of the people who would possibly be pushing on a business to collect um, are now very much coming with open hands and looking to you for a solution. So you now can employ informal restructuring, which is essentially you working with um, the advice of legal counsel or an insolvency practitioner to present a, a way out informally. Everyone says, okay, I accept this is a good way. You'll pay some money towards this, you'll pay some money towards that, and we will reduce our debts in that manner. If one finds that there's a bit of resistance amongst the creditors, then you can always enter into a formal process using the BIA, Bankruptcy Insolvency Act, um, whereby you can now say, hey, I, I tried, you, you weren't really responsive. So now I'm going to, with the court process, make a formal proposal to you uh, by which uh, once a certain number of creditors agree, this will be a process that is adopted by the court and everybody must now follow. And that will permit you to then restructure in a very, in a very similar manner as, a, as the voluntary way. But now you have the benefit and backing of a court order in terms of moving yourself through the process. And that's the current benefit right now is that most creditors, if not all, are being very receptive to you approaching and working with them. As I mentioned, CRA has ceased all enforcement and if you were to deal with them now you'd find that they are very receptive and will even tell you that their current role is to facilitate and assist people working through any taxation issues. So we're coming up to about our 10 minutes I think we'll, we'll end on a more fun note. What do we want people to know about bankruptcy and insolvency law? And in your experience uh, practicing uh, this type of law in a variety of jurisdictions, what should they know about you both? Well, I have had a, a, a fairly extensive practice that runs from the UK to the Caribbean to Ontario. Um, in terms of colorfulness, I have benefited from seeing some amazing files where we have had to restructure companies over uh, many jurisdictions um, be them 
hotel groups, be them far more mundane, like plantations, uh, you name it. But the one thing that, that, is, that is with all of it is that it's meant to assist the business. That's the core fundamental I would ask anyone to take away. Restructuring is there to allow businesses to move forward. Everyone out there will suffer some setback, some more than others. And the key focus of a restructuring law is to help you get back on your feet. You're an entrepreneur. The law is here to assist you to keep on growing because you are a vital member of society. And without entrepreneurs, there would be no growth, no leadership. Um, and we need that. So if something sets you back, come talk to someone like myself, an insolvency lawyer or an insolvency trustee and have them work with you to plan the best way forward to recover from whatever small mishaps that may have occurred and lead to a sort of a brighter future. Well, this has been a great session. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. And uh, thank you, Oakville. It's great to join the Oakville Chamber whenever we can. Uh, we now have a Burlington office, so feel free when the pandemic ends. We are excited to meet all of you and to be out at more Oakville Chamber events in the, uh, the Western GTA. Enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, hopefully this helps you pivot your business post-pandemic. I'm Kevin Fernandez, and thank you to my colleague, Moda McElhinney. Bye-bye.